everyone and welcome to another video. I'm going to show you how to derive the coefficient of the stiffness matrices um, for structural analysis of trusses or bars, beams as well as frames in 2D. I'm only going to do 2D because the 3D matrices are quite large and difficult to work with. So yeah, let's get into it. Firstly, I'm going to show you the truss or bar element in 2D as I've mentioned. So this is what a truss element will typically look like and this is what we want to end up with. As you can see, a two node element with a X and Y force on each node. As well as when the element is rotated, you want to handle that. Um, as you know, or you should know, that a truss element has no moment acting on it. And yeah, that's it. So yeah, let's get started. We're going to firstly do our horizontal element to derive the primary and matrix. So we're going to look at an element which is shortened by a application of a force on node 1 and then another one that is lengthened during a, the application of a force on node 2. Okay, yeah, so just note that these forces are in equilibrium and in their positive directions which they will act because you can see that the force applied is F1 to um, cause the shortening and the reaction force F2 will be counter countering that reaction. And the same for the for the other figure, force extends and the reaction force is in the other direction. Okay, so firstly we'll look at F1. You see the first um, the first figure F1 will be positive because it's in the same direction of the displacement and yeah, these coefficients come from the typical formula where force is equal to AE over L times the displacement the, the displacement which, which is D1 and for the other figure F1 is in the opposite direction of the displacement that's where the negative comes from and also AE over L times the D2 displacement. And then we do the same for F2, which is in the first figure. F2 is in the opposite direction of the first displacement, D1, which gives the negative sign. And the second figure, again, is in the same direction, which gives a positive sign. So we're just going to transform this um, system of equations into matrix form, which gives us this, you can see I'm just rewritten this in matrix form. So F1, F2 again, AE over L, I've taken out of the matrix, which gives the 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1, as you can see there, and again, just the displacement 1 and the, the displacement 2. And for the stiffness method, this is basically the normal equation. We usually write it F, which represents the vector of two forces. And K is the stiffness matrix, which is the AE over L, and that matrix in this case. And the D represents D1 and D2 displacements. And from there you can see that K equals AE over L, 1, minus 1, minus 1, 1. Okay, next we want to rotate the element, which will give us this. And you should know that a truss element only or actually only has forces acting perpendicular or not, not perpendicular sorry parallel into the bar itself and when we rotate it we want to get the, the components of these forces in the XY plane or the XY coordinate system also just note that when you rotate an, um, a member by theta theta is always measured from the horizontal up until the element. For, um, for instance, this theta will be positive. Okay, next, um, the form of the um, stiffness equation for this element will be if 1x will be the stiffness and the, and the displacement. As you can see, it also follows f equals kd. Um, the v displacements is the y displacements and U1 accent will be, as you can see, as indicated there, in the direction of the force. 
So, as you know, the U1 displacement will be zero for this case. And what we want to do is we want these local forces, which is um, parallel to the bar or the truss element, in the XY coordinate system so we can work with them. Okay, so next we want to stretch KH or K accent because we want to account for the horizontal and vertical um, displacements. As I've stated, the vertical displacements will be zero, so there will be zero there, zero there, and also these will be zero. And as you can see, the one minus one, one, one accounts for the U1 accent and the U2 accent. Okay. Next, we want a transformation matrix or yeah, a rotation matrix to rotate the bar by an angle of theta. Um, these are just sub matrices and cos sine so minus sine cos. Um, it is a basic rotation matrix. You should be able to know this. If you do not, um, please Google it. It's very out there and yeah, very popular. As you can see, for the um, rotation of U1 accent or V1 accent, it has nothing to do with U2 or V2. So these nodes are independent of each other when it comes to rotating, and that makes sense as well. So as you can see, these accent vectors, which are also there, is equal to that um, rotation matrix. We're going to call it the T matrix times the actual U1, V1, U2, V2 that which we want to work with. So yeah, we're going to transfer that to D accent equals T times D, which D accent is is the local displacements and the rotation into the global displacement. And accordingly, we can say the same for F accent equals T times the F that we want. F accent again is the um, local forces acting on the member. I'm just going to rewrite that to get F equals T transpose F. T transpose and T inlet is the same. It's a special magic. You can also read up on that if you really need to. Okay, so next what we want to do is I just show the picture again here. We will add F accent equals K accent D and we just apply the previous equation which we had F accent equals T times F and K accent equals K accent and D accent became, becomes T D and then again we multiply from the left with um, T inverse which gives F and T transpose K accent T D and this will give us the F's F1 x f1 y as well as f2 x f2 y and well as well as the um, global displacements in the x y coordinate system so this looks like comes out as that so you can relate that k equals the transpose k accent and again the rotational matrix and this when you perform that t transpose k accent t you will come out with this system. So you can, uh, yeah, and also this column um, accounts for one x, so it's f one x. This is f one y or one y, two x, two y, and it's always symmetrical. If you always, if you want to check if your stiffness matrix is correct, you can always check if it's symmetrical. Then you will have a good indication. Okay, so yes, there, that is the first element, and yeah, that is the first truss element, stiffness derivation, and this matrix you can use for truss elements analysis. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please, um, if you want beam elements, um, watch the next video. And yeah, thank you.